This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this isn't just the Moto Z, though it is a Moto Z. This is the Moto Z with the Hasselblad camera add-on. Story name Hasselblad, maker of high-end cameras, a generally medium format these days. Like Leica, it's a brand name that people know and they expect, well, it must be good, right? So we've seen both of these companies put their branding in conjunction with camera manufacturers on certain phones. So in this case, this is a Moto Mod add-in. Works for any of the Moto Zs. You got a Moto Z straight, Moto Z Force, Moto Z Play, it works with all of them, anything that works with the Moto Mod system. And it's as simple as clamping it on with the magnetic little feature right there. So there we have the naked back of the Moto. And here's this nice little back. See, even a little protective foam for the existing camera because this is going to completely replace the existing camera on your phone. So just clamp it right on, easy peasy, right? Comes with its own little carrying case, and it says woohoo, you put a mod on, and you're ready to take pictures. Why would you want to do this? It's not cheap, it's $300. If you get it from Verizon stores in the United States, it's $250. Now, I don't know if you have to be a Verizon customer to purchase accessories currently from Verizon stores. You have, you have to be a customer if you're going to buy a phone for them, but accessories, I don't know. So, you know, it might be worth your while to jog over there if you're interested in this. Save yourself $50. Anyway, the reason why is because it gives you 10x optical zoom. So that's kind of like bridge camera range, we call it, or one of your better zooms on a point and shoot in terms of length. So there you have it. You know, nothing looks uglier than when you zoom in on your average camera phone picture. And suddenly it's a hot mess of sloppy pixels and blur and all that sort of thing. So that gets around the problem. That said, for this price, you could also buy yourself a pretty decent point and shoot with the built-in zoom. Is it worth it? We're going to find out now. Now, just for a little bit of history of technology moment, this isn't the first time we've seen a 10x digital zoom married to a camera. In fact, this zippy little, you can hear it focusing constantly. That's the Samsung Galaxy Zoom. It was both a smartphone, a Samsung smartphone, and a camera all in one device. Not separable though. So it was a little bit bulky. It was a little heavy. I, I think it did okay in the marketplace. They did make two generations of it, but it's kind of gone away. But boy, it looks absolutely teeny, mostly because screen sizes of phones have gotten a lot bigger. By the way, as I'm holding this, now that we're all terrified of any phone that gets hot, this does get hot when you're running it with the Hasselblad mod on. It doesn't mean it's going to blow up. It hasn't blown up on us, but I, apparently, you know, the sensor inside the module itself and the camera working pretty hard to process the data that's seeing right now, it's going to get warm. So the resolution of the Hasselblad camera module is 12 megapixels. It has a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor size, which is the same sensor size as your better camera phone today, including the Moto Z Forest. It's pretty close. Oversized pixel sites, 1.55 UM pixel size. So that's good for letting more light in ever so slightly bigger than the forces sensor, like I said, but we don't know the manufacturer. I, Lenovo hasn't stated. Previously, they've been using Sony sensors and been, been using one other company for the actual camera phone modules themselves. It's probably the same here. It's certainly not likely that Hasselblad was actually involved in the sensor design. So here's the thing. The aperture on this, you can see right on the lens, there's f3.5 to f6.5. That is pretty limited. The aperture it refers to how wide open the lens gets relative to the sensor size. So these days, nicer camera phones are f1.8. Those smaller numbers are actually better. So you're, you're looking at a lens that's fairly dark, partic particularly at the telephoto lens. The second number is in the tele range. And if you're using it at the, the widest angle, that f3.5, well, you're actually a lot darker than you would be, say, with the Moto Z with the f1.8 lens, just using the native camera camera lens. So that's that's a little bit unfortunate and surprising for such a, a fancy piece of hardware. And the fanciness does extend to having a xenon flash. That is much brighter than having the LED flash on your phone. You got the zoom lever right over here. It's very easy to operate. Just push, just push. That's all it is. This is your power button right here. It'll automatically time out and power off to save battery every so often. But it's very nice and smooth zoom. There is no manual focus ring here, so we're not getting that enthusiast oriented. Sorry about that. This is just a zoomer, usual Tower of Hanoi look. There's no tripod pod mount on this, but you could use one of those ones that grips the phone just like you do for your naked phone if you're taking pictures. So the built-in camera application is still the one you're going to use, but you can use third-party camera apps too if you want. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can switch between photo and video mode. you got panorama mode there as well. We're going to stick with photo for the moment. You get these Hasselblad add-ons here. So you can choose to save as color, black and white, 
and color raw DNG format plus JPEG. And if you want to try lifting a little shadows, adding a little extra color and spice there, and you have a couple of different, you got auto here, you know, a couple of different scene settings, night portrait. It seems largely to figure it out for itself anyway without giving it that help. You got a timer option, you have flash control. So pretty simple stuff there. And then the usual moto swipe out to get to some more settings. Maximum video resolution, again, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. So your built-in camera will do a better job there. You can get 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second or 4K resolution. So unless you particularly need to video something that's zoomed, I recommend actually use, just using the built-in camera on your Moto Z instead. Also, this has optical image stabilization, the Hasselblad, but only for photos, not for video. So particularly when you're zooming, that always amplifies accidental hand movements. It just leads me back to saying, well, I'm just going to use the built-in camera and, and live without being able to zoom for video. This is more of a photocentric product. Now focusing, obviously this is not designed for macro either. The, once again, you're built in camera. If you get really close, it'll kick into macro mode. You might have better luck. This doesn't focus super duper close, especially as you're zooming out. It just gives up on focusing there. It really just can't. Even if I tap to focus, it's not going to be able to. But if I zoom out to, well, the native 25 millimeter equivalent zoom range, then it can focus just like your, well, your naked phone can do. So that 10x zoom gets you 25 to 250 millimeter equivalent focal length. That's talking in 35 millimeter full frame terms, which is the usual scale that we use to discuss zoom ranges. Okay, so here are some sample photos, and what better place to go than the zoo, where you always need a long zoom lens. And if you've ever tried to do that with your regular camera phone, and you took this awesome picture of some animal, and then you zoomed in, so it was just the animal, and you said, oh, what a blocky mess. Here's the solution, and this is actually pretty nice looking, this elephant. This is actually very easy. Uh, for a camera in general. There's a lot of texture here. There's a good amount of contrast and not much of extreme darks or extreme lights. So this is going to look pretty good. And it does look pretty good. Yeah, even if we do a little zooming in here, uh, it's starting to break up just a little bit and look a little bit digitized. But really, honestly, it looks nice. I wouldn't go running to a, a nice point and shoot instead. Next, oh, isn't this cute? We have the meerkat here. The meerkat is not as sharp looking as I would like. It kind of looks like a camera phone, and this does have, well, a camera phone sensor. One of the larger ones, as that goes, but it's still nice. Also, notice the wood here. I, it, it has this annoying habit of focusing on what you didn't have in mind, so tapping the focus is a good idea here. Uh, my opinion is it was really going for this piece of wood over here and not our friend the meerkat. Even though there's not much of a sh depth of field here creating blurred of the background, there is obviously some blurring going on as you're moving along. Now just for a contrast, this was taken right here with the Fuji X-T10. That's an APS-C mirrorless camera, so it's not full frame. It's not a point and shoot. It's the one in between. APS-C is the kind of the bread and butter for a lot of people who are carrying around dedicated cameras these days, you know, the kind with interchangeable lenses. And this did have a zoom lens that was actually at the same focal length as our previous picture. So around 200 millimeter zoom range right here. So an uh, awful lot of clarity and a lot more bokeh of the background going on. So, you know, obviously it's not going to replace something like an APS-C, an interchangeable lens kind of camera here. That would be asking a lot, even for $300. Next we have the parrots. They look pretty good. A little bit of a color cast that's a little bit too cool, maybe a little too slightly sickly green, but overall this is a pretty nice looking picture and something I obviously couldn't have gotten if I hadn't zoomed to almost maximum range here. This looks nice. There's not a super a lot of detail in the feathers, all that sort of thing. It is still a camera phone kind of image there. Tiger taken through a window, odd, but kind of almost attractive effect that it has here. The tiger keeps at least some of its stripe color, but the rest of the background kind of became monochrome, which looks neat. It's not the way the scene actually looked, but hey, again, it's lacking for sharpness. The point of highest contrast is his tail right here, and I think that's where it did the best job of focusing too. So there's an overall softness to these images, so you might want to edit them after the fact to make them look a little sharper. And our little friend up in the tree over here, and not bad. I, again, looks kind of camera phony, not a, an acute amount of detail here. 
but decent. And we can see quite a bit of whiting out of the sky in the background here. Again, you really, the aperture can't get all that small. So that's a challenge for it. Plus there's some dynamic range here, though not as much as you might think from looking at the picture. Again, this is the kind of picture that you couldn't have taken though with just your usual very wide angle lens on a camera phone. Next, there are times when for ultimate sharpness, look how sharp this is. This is just the regular Moto Z Droid Edition's back camera without the Hasselblad. Look how sharp this is in comparison to the photos I've been showing you. So the processing algorithm with the Hasselblad is definitely towards, well, the soft and the focus is often a little bit off, whereas this is just spot on and beautiful looking, isn't it? And this is just the naked phone, no Hasselblad on it. Now, when it comes to low light photos, first I'm gonna show you with the flash on, that xenon flash, we've heard of red eye, right? Here we have, well, it's almost magenta eye. We've got two-tone, we've got red eye, blue eye. Oh, wow, that's a little creepy. But it's not bad. It was a pretty dark room. You, you get the sense of that, certainly from the picture, but there's enough detail on the kitty cat, even as we zoom in. All right, now it's starting to break up, but that's fair. We're zooming in quite a bit. Background has some noise. Without the flash, Ooh, fuzzy wuzzy. Not not a low light camera by any means. This is, yeah. So it's not for your club shots, folks. It's not for concert shots at night either, even though the zoom might be tempting. It just doesn't have those kind of low light capabilities. So there you have it, the Hasselblad True Zoom for the Moto Z series of phones that support Moto Mods. The, the one that's always happy to see you, if you know what I mean, 10X Zoom. That's something pretty special that you actually get real optical zoom. However, given the other limitations, it, it doesn't always pick focus really well. It's not fast to focus. It only does 1080p video, whereas if you take this off, your, your, your phone by itself can do 4K, depending on which of the Moto Zs you get. I would personally buy a point and shoot instead of this because, you know, it it's... It's big, it's bulky, a point and shoot is not really going to be any bigger than this. In fact, it's probably going to be smaller. But still, there's something to be said for you already know how to use your camera phone. For a lot of people, you've grown up and the only camera you've had these days is your phone. So it has familiarity. The software on it is decent. There's some nice effects. It can shoot raw, so you can pull some details out of it. So there it is. It's not bad at all. And, and I think this is kind of the future, it's just when the price comes down. And the quality goes up a little bit too in terms of image quality. Uh, the, the build quality on this is actually very nice. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.